At its most basic, there are three different places you can change the volume of audio in Pro Tools. The first place to go to to change the volume of your clips should be the track volume. The track volume is located here. When you left click and hold on a VOL tab, you'll see a slider pop up. You can drag that up or down to change the volume of all the clips on your track uniformly. So if I'm changing the volume on this track, all the clips on the track go up and down according to what I do with this fader. George White usually sells his work through art brokers and small galleries. Tonight, the 32-year-old and a few friends are trying and show their support by arriving early. Passersby also drift in. If you'll notice, when I change the volume of the track, these meters do not change. Usually sells his work through art brokers and small galleries. These meters are showing the actual recorded volume of all the clips on the track, but not any changes from the volume of the track itself. These changes are reflected in the meters present in your master track or main track. So if you'll look down at these meters as I change the volume, you'll see that the changes are reflected here. And small galleries. Tonight, the 32 year old and a few friends are trying a new tactic. So make sure while you're mixing, you don't cause any distortion. If I raise the volume of a track too loud, I can actually create distortion in that track, as is indicated on the master fader here with these two red dots. I can click these dots to make them go away. And after I make more volume changes to my project, hopefully I won't see them again. If I do, I'll need to lower the volume of that track just enough to keep it from distorting. The master track itself also has a volume tab. If I left click and hold, you'll see that I also get a fader for this track. Raising and lowering the volume of the master track raises and lowers the volume of every single track in the project uniformly. So if you have a great mix and it's just marginally too loud, you can lower it with this fader. Or if the entire project is just a little too quiet, you can raise everything together with this fader. You can also change the volume on the clips themselves. On each clip, you'll see a zero dB and a little fader icon just to the left of that. It's present on every single clip in the project. If I left click and hold on this icon, I'll get another fader box. And here I can also raise and lower the volume of a clip. This raises and lowers the volume of that specific clip. This is not where you should be adjusting your volume for your project. It's not where you should be mixing. Mixing on a clip by clip basis is laborious, takes forever, and actually can cause a great many problems later on in the project. So when should I use the clip volume or clip gain as it's called? When I recognize that some of the audio that I've recorded has been recorded too low. How do I know that? Well, usually you see small waveforms like on this clip versus healthy waveforms in this one, which are fairly visible and present. But you also know if a clip's too quiet. If you're playing it, will be destroyed by the artist on stage. Obviously, this is very, very quiet. If I go to the volume tab to raise the volume, even if I raise it all the way up, the artist on stage. Our idea is rather than to go It's still pretty curator. quiet. I should rarely have a situation when I'm working on a mix where my volume is maxed out all the way and I have no other room to work. If you're seeing this in your project, your clip volume is just too low. So at what point should I adjust the gain of this clip? I'd recommend doing it before you start editing. If we look at the original clip, that's pretty quiet. You should be able to recognize that right when you import it into your project. So before I do any editing at all, I'm going to go here, left click, and raise the volume of the clip. 
I'm not going to do this too much. If I do, I'm going to start causing distortion in the clip. Whatever I adjust here is going to be reflected on the meters of the track itself. So if we listen to just this clip. But it, it, it had some of this German feeling of a Berlin feeling, which is. You'll see that this section here has been raised too loud. And the meters here are beginning to clip. Let's listen again. But it, it, it had some of this German feeling of a Berlin feeling. We want to avoid that yellow light showing up. So I'm going to lower this a little bit more. But it, it had some of this German feeling of... And make sure we didn't cause any distortion in the clip. I'm doing this by checking the peaks of the clip, the loudest sections, to make sure that I'm not throwing anything over the edge. Make sure that the work has no chance to return to the market. So it has one chance at the market. Now that we've adjusted the gain of the clip, any editing that I do, that gain is consistent across all the edits on the clip. So each section that I cut, the clips have the same adjusted values. It's important to have consistent values with the elements on your tracks. So now that we have louder clips, that is going to make mixing a little bit easier because we have more to work with. When I'm adjusting the gain of a clip, I'm not necessarily worried about how it sounds in relation to other clips and other tracks. What we want to make sure of is that we have enough volume to work with when we start mixing. Mixing is going to be the process of determining, does this clip sound good with this clip? And does this clip sound good with that one? And that's what we use the volume adjustments in our tracks for. So for example, where any piece that doesn't get sold will be destroyed by the artist on stage. Our idea is rather than to go through a curator. So this voice sounds a little quiet to me compared to this voice. So we're going to raise this volume just a touch to match the overall volume of the clip preceding it. Destroyed by the artist on stage. Our idea is rather than to go through. Maybe a little more. Be destroyed by the artist on stage. Our idea is rather than to go through. And that sounds pretty good to me. When you're mixing, it helps to work off of what might be the cleanest or best recording that you have in your project. And oftentimes that's your narration. So I like to choose a section of narration that happens to be the average volume that I think should be consistent in the project. And then I mix all the other voices to that specific section. So when I'm adjusting the volume for this, I'm listening to this. And when I'm adjusting the volume of this track, I'm also adjusting it compared to this. So I'm constantly going back and forth, listening to this, adjusting the volume of that. Listening to this, adjusting the volume of that. That way my frame of reference is consistent and I can make smarter choices. Because the volume in a track affects all the clips uniformly, you have to follow some pretty specific rules when you're mixing. If the subject you've recorded is the same, if the time you've recorded that subject is the same, if the location is the same, and if you've used the same equipment, it's pretty safe to make sure that that content can go on the same track. If there's a deviation of any one of those things, if the subject changes, if the time changes, if the location changes, or if the equipment changes, those recordings should go on a different track. Inevitably, they're going to have different tonal characteristics. They might be louder or quieter. They might have more noise or less noise but they will need different considerations when mixing, so they should go on a separate track. So if I have narration that I've recorded in the studio with the same person and the same equipment, but on a different day, I'd put that content on an entirely separate track. You can have as many tracks as you need to work with, and I recommend using as many tracks as you need to make an effective project. Sometimes a project isn't just one clip and then another clip and then another clip. Sometimes you're going to want some music or ambient sound or other things happening at the same time. 
In this instance, I have some ambient crowd noise from the day that the recordings were made. I'd like them playing at the same time as the narration. ...work through art brokers and small galleries. Tonight, the 32-year-old and... But at this point, it's too loud. So I'm going to adjust the volume to lower the ambient sound. White usually sells his work through art brokers and small galleries. Tonight so I can hear the ambient sound, but it's not overwhelming the voice. A lot of you are going to ask, how loud should this be? How loud should that be? And the answer is, use your ears. It's going to be a difficult skill to develop at first. It's going to be a little confusing. And there are going to be some changing rules about mixing as you develop more skills. But for right now, when you're recording, record as loud as you can without causing distortion. And mix as loud as you can without causing distortion. Use your voices as a reference and mix in tertiary elements like ambient sound or music after you've made sure that all the voices sound even amongst themselves. A quick note about volume. Every track has a default volume of 0.0. .0. Every clip has a default volume of 0 decibels. Zero doesn't mean no sound. What zero means in this case is no change to the sound. So 0.0, .0 in an audio mixing program is referred to as unity gain, which simply means the volume you're hearing is the volume of the recorded file without any extra adjustments made to it. When I start to adjust volume, you'll see that the values are either positive or negative. Negative values mean you're lowering the average volume of the sound, and positive values mean you're increasing the overall level of the sound. And once again, zero means no change at all. So those are the three basic places you can change volume in Pro Tools. There are more places than these three, but we'll get to those in later videos.